Um, so what if they ask you, please tell us about a time that you made a mistake and how you took accountability for it. Okay. Could it be like a near miss mistake? Yeah. Kind of. Okay. As long as you um, say at the end, like, you know, that you realize you're like, you're grateful for that learning opportunity because you realize it could have been so much worse because of this and that reason. And so in the future, you're going to do X, Y, and Z to make sure your patients okay. are safe. Yeah. Um, let's see here. Okay. Um, I had a patient or I had a nurse go and tell me to get a urine sample from a patient. So I went, it was, we had two patients in one room. We had bed A and bed B. She told me to go get a uh, urine sample from bed A and gave me the patient's first last name. And when I went in there, I realized that they had antibiotics running. And I was kind of like, okay, well, if I learned anything in nursing school, it was take their urine sample before antibiotics are given. So in that moment, I was kind of confused. And my nurse was really, really busy that day. So I kind of just took it upon myself. I'm like, all right, well, this just doesn't make sense to me. So let me just pull up the chart myself and see what's going on. And out of the four patients we had, we only had one patient that needed a urine sample for um, a possible UTI. And that was the patient in bed B. So I ended up going and just double checking with the nurse. I was like, hey, um, you said bed A in this patient. I just want to make sure because in the chart it's for bed B. And she's like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was my mistake. So I ended up taking the urine sample from bed B instead. But I guess the thing that I learned from that is to always do my own research because I could have just gone in there, taken that urine sample from that patient, sent it out to the labs, and it would have been a waste of everybody's time. So from that moment, I remember like if someone told me to do something, let me pull up the chart first. Like even if it was just feeding a patient, I'm like, let me make sure this patient is even allowed to eat and which kind of diet they're on. So that definitely made me more aware. Yeah, I like that. And like, just to kind of humble it up a little bit, you could say something like, you know, as a new grad, there's so much that I'll need to learn. Okay. It'll be a time where I need to be especially careful not to just rely on a supervisor or something like that or a mentor. Or maybe. maybe you can say um, it'll be, it'll be a time where it's especially important for me to look at my orders, look at the policies and procedures. Okay. Um, and to remember that, you know, even though there are people who I I'll need for them to um, kind of, share their knowledge with me I'm ultimately responsible because Uh um you know if mistakes are made it it can really hurt people so um, yeah while I'm still being a sponge and learning everything I can from anyone who's willing to share um their knowledge with me um I do still need to be really careful um and double check okay Can you please tell me about a time when you received constructive feedback from an instructor and how you made changes going forward? Okay. Um, So this wasn't working as a student. This was actually when I was a medical assistant. Um, I was in charge of gathering paper for surgeries and organizing it for the doctor to look at to put into the chart. And there was a specific way of doing it. It was alphabetical order and um, attaching the photos that were with it. So I unfortunately um, mixed up two patients that had the same last name with an M. And when I gave it to him, he actually charted that this patient had a skin cancer when the other patient that was supposed to be in that order had a skin cancer. And thankfully it was caught right away but he pulled me aside and just let me know like make sure to be detailed make sure to triple check everything and he was not very nice about it but I really took that as like a learning experience and I'm like okay well also you know he's taking the time to talk to me he could have just you know, fired me, (laughs) but he actually sat down with me and explained to me what was going on. And I really feel like 
when someone takes the time to let you know where you can improve or where you can change, it's because they genuinely care and want the best for you. And I really take constructive criticism well, because I know that they're going out of their way to teach me something. And I really appreciate that. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, You could even say something like, uh, you know, I know how hard it is to have to be the person to give constructive feedback. So when someone is willing to do that for me, um, I try to really like listen and honor what it is they're trying to communicate. Okay. Yeah. They may also ask you um, for like the reverse, like tell me about a time Mm -hmm. when you had to provide constructive criticism or like help um, another employee be more effective at their job or like a time you were a part of a team that was not functioning properly. Um, A lot of people take that opportunity to talk about like either some situation where they were training someone and had to give feedback because it kind of makes you seem like a leader if you're the one that your boss wanted like other employees to be like you and like you train them or they talk about like a situation where someone was disrespectful to a patient and they had to like step in and like explain that that was disrespectful and apologize or like a nursing student being like, or sorry, um, like a nursing assistant being like, no stupid, you're changing the diaper wrong. And you having to tell them like, love the feedback, maybe not, (laughs) maybe not that way. Well, I mean, so I actually like had a time and I, this was okay. So I was, I was just explain the story to you really quickly. It was, um, a patient was confused about like post post uh procedure just care and like all of that yeah and they're asking me if I could ask the doctor to come back in and just explain it better because they felt like the doctor was really rushed and the patient told me that they didn't really like how the doctor handled the situation Mm -hmm. um so uh I asked my preceptor nurse if we could have the doctor come back in and she's like okay like this is a great opportunity for you to call and ask so I called and, and I asked And I just let him know really politely. I was like, hey, the patient just needed some more clarification on um, the post procedure and how to take care of everything. He was just a little confused. If you could come back down whenever you have time to explain it to him. And he just snapped on me on the phone. Like, (laughs) at me. And like, he's like, are you kidding me? Like, cussed at me. And I was just like, okay. I was like, you know, I'm really sorry that, you know, you're feeling frustrated with me. I just really want to let you know, because I wanted to be this advocate for my patient. Um, But I really feel like the way you're talking to me is a little inappropriate right now. I literally said this word for word and I could see my nurse standing in front of me because she can't hear what he's saying. Right. (laughs) And she was just like, like, what's happening? And I got (laughs) off the phone and like right afterwards, he called, he was calling down and like, within 10 minutes, the nursing supervisor came up to me. She's like, can I talk to you? I was like, yeah, of course. And I talked to her and I explained her everything that happened. And I just let her know. I was like, I just, I was trying to be an advocate for my patient. He was confused. I asked the physician, you know, this would happen. I let him know that he was talking to me in an appropriate way. And she's like, you handled that great. And I'm really glad that like you were able to stand up for yourself. And I was like, okay, I'm not in trouble. Cause like that was really <laughs> scary. <laughs> like, but um but the doctor did end up apologizing to me I think I don't know what was going on that day but he was but yeah so I don't know maybe I could tell like that story or is that no that's good I was so this I wasn't working as a nurse but I was actually working as a greeter and a screener at a hospital and we would check patients in or check visitors in to visit their family members And I had one specific visitor who had brought in like a little prayer um, item and they had asked me to bring it to the room and put it at the patient's pillow because at this time it was during COVID height of the pandemic, they weren't actually allowed to go in. They could bring items and we would bring it in and they just really emphasized like, can you please, you know, put this at their bedside And normally we would call up to the unit and the UA, the unit assistant would come down and get it. But I just, I just felt like, I was like, you know, I can go up there. And I feel like because they're asking me so something so specific, I really wanted to make sure like it was done. So when I walked up to the unit, I was like, is it okay if I go put this item at the patient's bedside on their pillow? They're like, yeah, absolutely. Thanks for bringing it up. Um, But I just felt like 
I really wanted to do that. I wanted to, you know, respect the family's wishes. So I did yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, I think that works. And then I would add something at the end about like what your takeaway is going forward or like maybe how much you appreciate living in an area where you get opportunities to learn about other cultures and okay. yeah, I don't know, some yeah. kind of like take it forward or like gratitude piece for it. Mm-hmm. You should have at least two stories about like when you had to escalate something mm-hmm. uh, and they might ask you specifically like bait you for it saying like tell us about a time when you had to make a decision quickly regarding a patient or like a time when like actions you took directly influenced a patient you know becoming stable or like they might ask you kind of like more a direct question about like tell us about a critical patient story or you if they don't you need to fit hopefully two in and you can squeeze these stories into like a time you advocated a time you worked well collaborating as a team um even like a time you went above and beyond the time you have to think critically like and it's you know like any like a patient who had vitals that weren't great like if you ever had to work up like a possible stroke or like someone had blood sugar issues or like anything that wasn't great and you worked with the group and like escalated and stuff yeah um, I actually did have a blood sugar um, incident I was working at a skilled nursing home and one of our patients who was a type 2 diabetic um, I was in the room with her and I was just kind of hanging out with her because in the skilled nursing home one of our duties was just to keep the you know residents company and as I was talking with her I noticed she was drinking a lot of water And when I was talking with her, I was like, her breath smells like she just like threw up or something. I don't, it just seemed off to me. And I was like, hmm, okay, well, like, when was the last time she had her blood sugar checked? And I went and checked her chart. And the one that they were supposed to do the hour before, they hadn't put anything in. So I was like, oh, maybe they're, you know, they haven't charted it yet. But I was like, let me just go grab the glucometer because we were able to do that. So I ended up checking her blood sugar and I was at 250. So it was pretty high and I went and grabbed my, um, the nurse, the charge nurse, because in this facility we had, everything was reported to the charge nurse and I just let her know. I was like, Hey, this patient is, you know, I'm seeing excessive thirst and I'm seeing her breath smells different when they say fruity breath, hold on off topic really quick. When they say fruity breath, it is not fruity. <laughs> like it's a very, it's weird. I don't know. But, um, so, and I told her that the, uh, blood sugar was at 250 and if we could administer some insulin for her. So we went ahead and gave her insulin and then I just continued to monitor her for like the next hour or so. And then, yeah, went down and she was fine after that. But what we found out why her blood sugar was so high, she went to the kitchen and she was asking the, uh, the workers there for cookies and they gave it to her. <laughs> they gave her a bunch of cookies. <laughs> like, oh. So I actually ended up going to the kitchen. I was like, hey, like if you see this patient, like don't give her cookies. She is not allowed to eat the cookies. So. She's muscling you. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. cute. Okay. Yeah. Um, you could use that for if they ask you like a time you advocated for a patient because you've already okay. told a bunch of stories about like to demonstrate your ability to advocate. Like, I think this okay. would be a good time to do something critical. What about something like even more like dangerous? Anything like I've never actually dealt with anything like that. Okay. So it's hard for me to think. Yeah. I'm like, Have you ever witnessed anything like that? Like, like sepsis uh, maybe, or like, I haven't. No, I okay. feel so. Yeah. I'm like, oh, no, it's okay. I'm so, yeah. <laughs> Well, because the way you tell this one, just like as an interviewer, it tells me that you have the confidence to trust your own judgment and like the initiative to work something up yourself appropriately. And then if it's out of normal range, you have the confidence to then go to the right person and get the right people in the room. That's basically all you need, like as a new grad. I just thought, okay, so I actually I had a patient. um, She fell off her bed. Oh, but, I shoot. Mean, yeah. Yeah. Oh, she, so bad. okay. She, yeah. 
so she fell off her bed and um I walked in there and she was she didn't have a call light on she wasn't like screaming for help I just happened as a new grad we always walk around and just you know monitor the call lights and I looked in her room and she was sitting on the ground and I was like hmm okay that's interesting so I walked in there I was like hey like are you okay and she's like yeah I was trying to go to the bathroom and I fell and I was like okay hold on like don't move like let me get someone really quick so I found the nurse that was taking care of her because she wasn't one of my patients and I was like hey like she just fell let's you know examine her and I hadn't actually dealt with um a patient who has fallen before but I kind of knew like the steps to take check her vitals assess her make sure she's okay and because she was totally aware, we kind of just asked her questions on like what happened. And she just said she had gotten up lightheaded and then fell to the floor. And thankfully she wasn't injured or anything like that. Um, vitals were totally normal. But once we made sure like everything was okay, no injuries, and the nurse and I just helped her back into bed. Um, um so that made sure like. to say like she hadn't um hit her head and there was no suspicion of like spinal cord injury that like say you made sure of that okay. before you moved her um and maybe okay. can you take credit for like um going to get like the proper lift equipment and helping the nurse get her back to bed okay and then, i mean well we didn't we didn't really need anything we just kind of the nurse just got in front of her and helped her back up so i don't know uh, okay um and then you could say like um that the nurse let the doctor know just in case. Okay. Um yeah. Did you guys do like a little neuro check on her or check her sugar? Uh, yeah, we did. Yeah, we checked she did the whole rundown, just like you know, um checked her if her pupils were good and yeah, she checked blood sugar. We checked the you blood could just sugar. Say after. We did um like a, a neuro check and a blood sugar on her just to okay. rule out uh, any possible causes. Okay. Yeah. Keep it short and okay. sweet. Cool. Cool. Yeah, no, that's great. Um, And like, I like that you said it wasn't your patient because it makes me feel less like this happened because you were careless or like didn't round or something like you were already rounding on someone that wasn't even your patient. So yeah, like, if it wasn't <laughs> okay. for you. Like she wouldn't have even known. Yeah. Um, cool. No, that's a good one. Um, okay. cause that's like a really common one that they use for the clinical scenarios. Okay. They're like, what would you do if you came into your patient's room and you found them on the floor? Okay. Um, so if I were to answer that, I would just be like, you know, assess them. Ask literally for help, help, said. Help. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Yeah. Love yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, cool. So for that one, maybe you could say like for that one, uh, you could use it for like if they ask you about a time you worked collaboratively with a team. Okay. Try to weave those two stories in somehow just so that they're like, okay, she's ready. Like we trust her. Like if something okay. goes wrong, she's like yeah. got a good head on her shoulders enough to like escalate it appropriately. Okay. Yeah. Um, And you seem to have good instincts with that stuff. That's like what comes across 